What's up, Visual fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Back with me, Rocky Padilla, and today we have a special guest. Man, this guy straight from the parking lot in Las Vegas, <laughs> the newest run speak basketball player, Jalil <laughs> Abdul Basit. Jalil, what's going on, man? How's it going, man? Appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much. Actually, I gotta say sorry to Jalil because I forgot to record it our last yeah, interview. I'm nice, nice slacking right now. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I'm slacking, man. My bad, my bad. But okay, hey, thank you so much, though, for doing this again. And thank you so much for taking your time in Las, uh, from Las Vegas. Really appreciate you for oh. this interview. But Jalil, what you been up to, man? No, I've just been relaxing, resting, getting ready for the mm-hmm. season coming up. Getting in the gym and relaxing. That's, that's pretty much it. And before we talk about your excitement for coming to Indonesia and getting drafted, man, I would, I would like to know, though, as a basketball player who plays uh, overseas, we know the pandemic hits everybody really hard. Uh, as a basketball player, how happy are you, man, just to see leagues starting to going on again, you know? Man, I'm ecstatic. Mm-hmm. I'm ecstatic to get back to playing, you know, get back to doing what I love. I'm just extremely grateful and blessed to be able to do what I love for a living. And so, how- you know, the pandemic, you know, put a hold on the things, mm-hmm. things for a lot of a lot of us. So it's for it to get back to somewhat normal. It's just blessing. And how hard was it though for you, you know, uh, during the pandemic as a basketball player, you're not able to play, you know, to, you know, probably make money, maybe, you know, how hard was it for you though during the pandemic? Yeah, it was really hard at first, for sure. Really hard mentally mm-hmm. on you, you know, trying to figure things out. Thank God I, that God blessed me to be creative. Mm. I, that's when I started my clothing line. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so everything happens for a reason, I guess, you know. But it definitely was hard being overseas, too, for a little bit at first mm. and seeing some people get sick that I know and things like that. Yeah. It was definitely tough. But, but thank God like- I didn't, I'm not one of the ones that got sick. You know I know, saying? right? We're like the lucky one, though, you know. Man, thank ones, God, though, yeah. you know. Let- Thank God, man, we were healthy, but right. um, this summer, you were pretty busy getting ready for the season, and I saw your video, you're working out with one of the most popular trainers in the world, Chris Brickley. Just would like to know, though, you know, which part of your game that you were focused on to work with uh, Chris Brickley? Yeah, just just being a pro, being a professional, everything I do, and focusing on making shots. Because being around those high-level guys, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's making shots. And you got to have it in your mind. Every shot you take is like $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, you just putting you emphasis know. on making shots. <laughs> that's how much it is <laughs> to work out with Chris Brinkley. <laughs> <laughs> right. You just got to stay stay extremely focused on what you're mm-hmm. doing because he ain't going to play with you. If, uh-huh. you're not, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, he's going to kick you out the gym. Oh, wow. I've heard yeah. stories. I've heard stories. If you're out there messing around, you're not – Cause he know he's giving his time. And he's working with a lot of top level guys. You know you can't be out being there messing around. Got to be in there focused and ready to work, ready to get better. But he's a really good dude. You know, being with him and working out with him and Joe and Isaiah Briscoe, it really did a lot for my confidence. Really did a lot. Seeing that I can play with those guys and do my thing against them, I feel like I can play against anybody. Oh, that's cool, man. That's really cool story. And what was the biggest lesson though? Do you think that you learned? from that experience with Chris Brickley? Did you get a chance um, to pick his brand, brain maybe? Yeah, I picked it a little bit. We, we just, mm. you know, we just have some real like genuine conversations, like mm. some things about life, some things about anxiety. And really just like a lot of it was him helping Joe with what he got going next. Mm. And really just was kind of basketball talk. It wasn't like too much of asking too much, mm-hmm. like, Somebody I would really want to pick brain is like Jamal Crawford and things like that. Wow. Some like you know, some 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 like all stars and things like that. But Chris Brickley, he knows a lot. He's worked with the best of the best. So it was kind of like a surreal feeling. I didn't really have the questions like mm-hmm. in my head, like, oh, I should ask him this, ask him that. But it was like him just helping me get better. It was just a blessing to be around it. And were you killing Isaiah Briscoe, man, in that workout? <laughs> <laughs> I will let the video speak for itself. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But Jaleel, for everybody who doesn't know, Jaleel played for Oregon Ducks um, for two yes, years. Sir. And he went to the he went to the NCAA tournament. 
man, just take us through, man, through that moment. Probably like one of the most, probably the, one of the best uh, moment in your careers go, uh, playing the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. It's like probably like once in a lifetime experience. And we in Indonesia, we don't have anybody yet playing the NCAA tournament. So can you? Oh, take, really? Yeah, can you just take us through, uh, you know, uh, how it was playing man. the NCAA tournament? It's a surreal feeling because mm-hmm. you got all the cameras, all the lights flashing, and all the fans that's there. Mm-hmm. And man, it feels crazy being out there. It's just surreal. You can't really describe it. Mm-hmm. It feels like you in the NBA, honestly. Yeah, so it's a crazy feeling. It's a crazy feeling. And I know you were... for the rest of my career. Mm-hmm. And I know you were in Oregon Ducks playing alongside NBA players, uh, Jordan Bell, yeah. and also Dylan Brooks. Man, can you just talk about, you know, how it was practice, man, with those two guys? Got to be competitive, man, every day. Yeah, I played with Jordan, Dylan, and, and Joe. Dylan Young. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, I went back and worked out with Oregon for two months, and Chris Boucher was there also. Oh. And Tyler Dorsey. They're all, all those NBA players, but, man, it was a dogfight every practice. It's a dogfight going against those guys. And it really gets you better because it's like you can't take a practice off, can't take a day off. You really can't take a day off because yeah. even after practice, they still want to go back to the gym later. You want to go play one on one, you know, things like that. So, like, just always trying to compete and get each other better. It's just a blessing being around them. And we still talk. I still talk to all those guys. We got our own little group chat. You know, we still talk, communicate. Those are my guys. Those are my brothers for life. Man, what do you guys talk about, man, in the group chat? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we talk about everything. <laughs> talk about everything. Man, I would love yeah, to be I'm that leader in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, any any fun story, any good story, maybe from the one on one with you and Dylan Brooks, maybe? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to put nobody. I don't want to put nobody on first and say a name, but I'm the one on one guy. When it comes to one on one, everybody knows Jalil is, is going to be, you know, when it comes to one-on-one. Okay. That's my, that's my thing. So that's we got to see, we got to see a lot of ISO then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I do. But yeah, I would like just to know now, uh, we're going to head to IBL. We're going to talk about the IBL. Um, you were drafted second uh, by Ryan Speak Basketball, but I just would like to know, how did you end up putting your name in the IBL? Oh, uh, my guy, Samuel. You know, he mm-hmm. hooked it up and linked me um, probably back a few months ago. He, he's been asking me, but I was trying, I was kind of debating going back and forth. I was supposed to go to China at first, mm-hmm. but, you know, things didn't work out because of the situation with the team said they're not going to bring imports. And, and I'm a new player, so it's harder for me to get over there, things like that. But hopefully next year. But I knew that it would be smart for me to, you know, tap in with the Asian market, you know, get over in Asia and, experience a different culture, different side of life. You know, it's just a blessing to be able to, to go to different sides of the world through basketball. Is this going to be your first time in Asian waters? <laughs> yes, sir. First you, time. First you, time. Better, you better be getting ready, man. Your social media, man. Social media is so big, in, especially in Indonesia. So people are so active on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Yeah, I seen that the first day yeah. after the draft. I'm like, I got 12,000 people watching my story. This is crazy. Oh, shit, for real? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So, so a few weeks ago, actually, this is a story. Justin Holiday, he was wearing our traditional shirt. So oh, wow. his IG was blowing up. Like, usually he got like 400 likes, maybe uh, 1,000 likes. He got like, 15,000 likes on that pictures alone. <laughs> I, need, I need to get I need to get that shirt. Oh uh, yeah, oh man. <laughs> We got to get that shirt ready, man. That's that's easy. <laughs> But it's so crazy though. Actually, um uh, you played in the crossover and we linked up um uh, at the crossover sure. uh that we talked through IG and now we actually heading to Indonesia. It's so crazy yes, how sir. the words work, man. It's so crazy. But Small um, world. Yeah, it's a small world, but I know you were up. You were up early six o'clock in the morning for that IBL draft night. Just want to know your reaction though when you get drafted second, man. Man, I was actually surprised that I went that, that early. You know, but I, I talked to a few teams before the draft and mm-hmm. talked to Rams a lot. So, but to go that early was just a blessing. I've never been drafted before, so mm-hmm. it just felt good to you know feel wanted. You know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I didn't actually. I didn't know that runs were like uh, 
interested in you because there were two teams actually asking me about you because I saw you at the crossover. So those two teams was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get Jalil. And then when I was the draft, <laughs> oh shit, Jalil went went drafted so fast, <laughs> like number two. <laughs> yeah. That that's crazy though. Know, but it's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. But have you ever get a chance to watch maybe the IBL or do you know anything about the IBL league? Uh, I don't know too much, but mm -hmm. I've watched um, some highlights from Rams through the preseason. Okay. And I seen that they was playing good and doing actually good against some established teams. So I just want to carry that winning mentality and winning culture over to the season. And also my friend Gary Jacobs, he played in the IBL before. So you know, I, I know I should have a lot of fun there. Oh, yeah. Gary Jacobs. Oh, that's like one of the most beloved imports in Indonesia. He has a lot of fans. He's explosive, man. He can catch yes. a lot of bodies, too. So how did you and Gary know each other? Yeah, you know, just being in Vegas. I lived in Vegas for three years mm -hmm. playing basketball. And I, I played against his brother, too, when his brother went to USC and I was at Oregon. So, you know, just having the same circles and just spooking. When you when you're good at basketball, you're gonna know everybody else that's good. So Gary's a bucket. Yeah, Gary, Gary's a bucket for real though. But uh for sure, man, basketball is a small world, man. You know, like us, exactly. we just bumped into each other at the crossover and now <laughs> we're talking to each other at, uh on Zoom. But have you got a chance though? Uh hold on, before I go to there, I would like to ask you. So do you know anything about your new owner at Ron Speak basketball? <laughs> No, I don't know too much, not yet. Not too But much. I must feel something for you, man. Your owner is one, probably I would I would I wouldn't say one, probably the biggest, the biggest entertainers in Indonesia right now. <laughs> What do you think about lit. that? Oh, it's lit. I'm gonna go put on the show. He's an entertainer, he's the biggest entertainer. Well, yeah, it's lit. That's what's hey, up. It's lit, man. I gotta That's wake why, up with bro. <laughs> yeah, that's why I told you like. Man, you better do a lot of nice dunks, man. So you're gonna repost it, <laughs> you and you're gonna get a lot of followings, man. Because he has like millions, millions oh. of followers. Wow. Yeah, yeah hopefully I give me a repost, you know. Shout out, shout me out. <laughs> <laughs> he will shout you out, man. No worries about that. So his name is Rafi Ahmad. Rafi Ahmad uh is one of the okay. biggest, man. He's like one of the biggest men. So he, he will be excited though when he sees you though. He will be excited when he sees you. But yeah, hopefully I can bring him a ship. Yes, sir. Amen to that. Um, and yeah, you're coming to Indonesia and in like probably like in a month. Have you have, have you got a chance to talk maybe to Coach Coco or maybe to Jeremy, the president of France basketball? Yes, sir. I've been in contact with them the last few weeks, you know, and right after the draft. Every other day I talked to Jeremy mm. and just talked about how good they do in the preseason. And they send me the playbook. You know, I'm just getting ready for the season coming up. Man, they send you the playbook already? <laughs> Was <Yeah>. it hard? <laughs> nah, I mean, it's basketball at the end of the yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be yeah. ready. That, that That's true, though. Hey, man, Indonesia is so lucky, though, know, to be able to get a chance to see your talent because you are a talented guy, man. I've seen your highlights, man. You're oh, really, really good. You, appreciate so that. I am so excited to have you, too, man, play in the IBL. But um, I would like to ask you, like, if for the people that who doesn't know you know you yet, if you can compare your game to an NBA player, who would you compare it to? If I compare it, when I look at, if I'm just doing the mm. eye test and I'm looking at players, the way they play, I always thought I kind of played like Paul George. Oh, okay. I always thought that. But... Ones that I, I'd say I'd model my game after a lot. Growing up, it was, for me, mm -hmm. it was Carmelo Anthony made me fall in love with the game. Then once I really started trying to tone my skills and, you know, working on different crossover stuff and stuff like that, Jamal Crawford was a big instrumental to my career. I mean, he's the reason why my crossover is the way it is. I used to try to really imitate his crossover. Him and Kevin Durant, I tried to imitate their crossover a lot. But I say today, yeah, they they're the ones that you know, very instrumental to my career. And today I watch a lot of Kyrie Irving. Okay. Yeah, I watch a lot of Kyrie Irving. Super skilled. I try to take all his stuff. Oh man, <laughs> Kyrie is nice though. Hopefully, yeah. you're gonna be back in the NBA very soon. Yeah, I hope so. I miss watching him play. 
I know me, me too. By the way, man, if you break someone's ankle, you're going viral, bro. You're going, going viral. viral. You're going viral if you break somebody's ankle, man. Uh, I got you. <laughs> we'll be waiting for that, bro. Uh, but Jamal, though, crossover is nasty. He got probably one of the nastiest uh, crossovers. All time. Yeah, all time, <laughs> man, in the NBA. And you played at the crossover. I'd like to know, though, sure. how did you end up at the crossover, bro? Man, just, you know, basketball world is so small. I know so many basketball players everywhere I go. And they just asked me to come play in the crossover. And I can't turn that down. Jamal Crawford, one of the – somebody I look up to as a player all my life. So, of course, I want to go play that. And then to have him, you know, talk to me and even tweet me, it was, it was, a, it was just like a surreal feeling, honestly. It was just extremely grateful for it and extremely blessed that the, you know, I experienced all that. Did you ever meet? Amazing. Did you ever meet Jamaldo before that? Yeah, I got to not before the not before the crossover, but there I got to talk to him a little bit, and it was just it was just a blessing to be able to do that. I got to talk to Jamal Crawford. He said I got game. That's crazy. That's man, crazy, man. I know. I feel the same way too. I felt the same way too because that was my first time at the crossover, and nobody know me. Who I, nobody know. I'm just like a kid from Indonesia. I just moved to Seattle like for a month, and then. You know, Jamal was so nice. He didn't even need yeah. to talk to me. He didn't need to talk to me, you know, but he made time. He made time right, to talk was, to yeah, me. He's a real genuine and humble dude. Yes, he's he is. And humble. He is. And I'm so happy, though, what he is doing for the community in Seattle. I think that is right. big time. That's uh, another you know. thing that I look up to him for. Like, you know, Seattle has a real tight-knit community. And I try to practice that with Alaska. Because, okay. you know, growing up, it wasn't like that for a long time. but Well, my junior generation, we try to like bring a lot of us together, you know, big up everybody. You know, we learned that from Seattle and Jamal Crawford and Isaiah Thomas, all them guys. Yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, those two guys inspires me too, you know, to help the youth, the next generation, right. the next generation basketball players in Indonesia. Hopefully one day someone gonna make it in the States, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, anything's possible for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Basketball is growing everywhere. Yeah, I true, man. Be surprised. Hopefully, we got we got one kid that might go to D1 next year. But I cannot say the school yet, but we are praying for that, though, okay, next I'll year. Keep that under wraps. Yes, yeah, sir. And before I let you go, I would like to know, though, who's your favorite? Uh, which which team is your favorite team in the NBA? I would like to know that. Right now, it's Brooklyn. Because Kevin Durant, Kyrie, and James Harden, Those are my favorite players to watch right now for the last uh, probably five years, maybe, maybe a little bit before that. Those are my favorite players to watch. I've been studying them for so long, and they're all on the same team now. It's crazy. It is crazy, though. Do you think they're going to win the championship? Hopefully Kyrie come back soon. Do you think they're going to win the championship? I mean, they got a good chance for sure. They got a good chance. But, you know, anything can happen, especially in the playoffs. People get hurt. Anything can happen. Anything's possible. Yes, yeah, sir. My team is the Clippers. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm a Clipper fan, but we're not okay. gonna we're not gonna make it far this year <laughs> because Kawhi. Yeah, is not without Kawhi. That's yeah, gonna be Kawhi. Yeah, that's gonna be. Paul tough. George been killing though. MVP season though. He's been <laughs> yeah, killing. he's been playing yeah, he's really been well. Killing. Yeah, he's been carrying. He's been carrying the load, man, for the Clippers this season. All right. So um, I'm happy though to see him doing that. But yeah, before I let you go, one more question. You got like one more month before you go to Indonesia. Uh, what's gonna What's gonna be the plan, man? Before you head to Indonesia, um, you know, just getting ready, working out. I'm supposed to link up with Pierre Jackson soon. Mm. Get some work in. I'm linking with my trainer Q, my trainer KG, and my guy Jonathan Lloyd. He also played at Oregon with me. So you know, I'm just make, gonna make sure I'm in shape and ready to go. KG, we're not talking about Kevin Garnett, right? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I was about to say, oh shit, it's working out with KG. <laughs> that would be dope. But Jalil, hey, once again, good luck. We are excited though to have you playing oh, no, in the IBL. Uh, stay healthy. And right? of that's course, good. safe travel to Indonesia. Food gonna be good. You're gonna be that's straight great. for the food. And you have Jeremy. Jeremy is the best guy to know in Jakarta, Indonesia. He will take care. Yep. He will take a good care of you in Jakarta. Uh, he will show you all the good foods. 
I don't know if you go clubbing. If you go clubbing, he will show you nah, all the good clubs. I'm an inside guy. I like to be inside. I like to stay in the gym. Okay, that's good. That's good. Because, yeah, I'm past that time, too. <laughs> right, I'm getting a little older now. I know. <laughs> As we get older, man, man, we don't mess with that. Man. I'll go to sleep at 11. <laughs> that's facts, though. For yeah, sure. I, I got to rest the knees nowadays. I know. But, hey, Julio, appreciate you, man, for doing this again. I know <laughs> it's not easy. Yes. But, but this time is better, though. The interview is better this time. I like this one better. So, really appreciate hey. you. All the best, man. Uh, and I will see you in Jakarta, man. I will see you in Indonesia. Yes, in sir. Days. Appreciate you for having me. Thank you, you wanna, so much. You want to say anything to the Indonesian basketball fans? Gosh, I'm ready to put on the show. Can't wait to get there. Yes, sir. Hey, Jalil is ready, man, to put on the show. So, guys, make sure you guys support and follow Jalil on Instagram. What's your handle? At Jalil Austin. Yes, sir. At Jalil. A-U-S-T-I-N. Yeah, so make sure you guys follow Yeah, make sure you guys follow him. Give him all the likes, man. You know, all the love too. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you guys again on the next video. Peace out. Peace.